Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very great to be here again. Okay, now I will start uh, introduce the Cronia, how to use Cronia to do the disk image and disk cloning. Before I start, let me ask, has anyone here used Cronia before? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Okay, <laughs> about 20%. Okay. <laughs> has anyone used the, uh, the function for the massive deployment? Anyone? No? Oh, oh okay, at least one. <laughs> okay, so uh, that, that one will be very interesting if you use that one in your machine room or your com computer classroom, something like that. Okay. All right, this, this is the outline for the, the introduction. First, I will in introduce the, the way, what, what is currently how to do the disk imaging and cloning. And uh, the second one is uh, be, uh, to use currently you must to have uh, some of the, you know, the live system. Uh, we have a Cronia Live for you and uh, how to do that in maybe in a uh, CD or in a USB flash drive. I will just show you how to do that. And, and for the rest, we will cover some of the steps about how to do the disk uh, imaging, disk cloning, and uh, some of the, uh, the advanced, advanced features like uh, unattended mode or like, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the message deployment. Uh, okay. So first, I will uh, give some uh, introduce, introduction about this kind of uh, this uh, image and cloning. Oh, yeah, if, if you have some uh, something happen to your computer, the base of the most important thing about the data, right? It's easy to buy a new new machine, but uh, as for the data, uh, if you loss of uh, some of the important data, then you you yeah things will get worse. So uh, the best thing is you. Take a, uh, you back up the data. But one thing you, you might need to know that sometimes you want to rebuild the whole system, it will take another few days. For example, you have to set up uh, some of the software, you have to install the software, do some more configuration. Like if you do image the system first, then it can be, the system can be restored maybe just 10 minutes, 20 minutes. But if you do, did, did not do that before, then you might spend another few days to have your machine uh, back to the ready mode as you get used to. So it's very important. I mean, if you have time, like uh, I, I forgot the, the day for the backup day. It should be April or something? April 4th. April 4th, yeah. <laughs> Every year, do a backup, <laughs> at least one. Why, why, why a year? But it will be better every quarter or something, yeah, anyway. So for basic development, as we mentioned that you uh, use this kind of function in the machine room or some, something like this. If you want to distribute that in the old way, nowadays most of the time you just use the web, your uh, cloud service. But sometimes you still need to distribute the USB flash drive then you can do this kind of message deployment. Or, or you know, as I mentioned, in the computer classroom, that, that's the, the way you use Cronia. Okay, so, so what is Cronia? It's a partition and disk image cloning utilities, like similar to the uh, true image or Northern Ghost, but okay. And uh, the license, the software license is GPL, and uh, it's, it's a, a bare metal recovery tool. By bare metal, we may, uh, because, uh, like uh, the machine, if you have uh, just the brand, uh, you you, you only have a hard drive and you want to install a system or you as I we mentioned in the computer classroom you might be have one or temper temporary machine and you want to replicate all the operating system and application to the, the rest of the computers that, that this kind of thing is we call you the know, bare metal deployment or something like that and uh, Cronia support the GNU Linux and uh, Apple uh, but we now only support the S86. Uh, for the ARM-based uh, Apple machine, is not really ready. Okay, and uh, of course the Windows system and uh, some of BSD, some, some of the uh, operating system, you can use Cronia to do this kind of uh, imaging and experimental re deployment. Okay, so that, that's the basic idea about the Cronia. So before, uh, as I mentioned before, we use Cronia, we might need to prepare some of the tools like a live system to do this kind of things. That's because uh, if 
you only have a blank hard drive, then you, you need some of the operating system to do things for you, right? So you need to, uh, the best thing is have a, a live system. And live system can be put on a CD or a USB flash drive, or of course on a PC server, and then you, you can do the network booting. But for normally, it will be very easy, just a USB flash drive, and you can do a lot of things. Okay, so how to do this kind of things, basic, uh, based on the USB flash drive, or oh, the first thing, of course, you need to have a Korea live ISO file or zip file ready. So you can go to the Korea website to download the files. Here, that's the, oh, how come? <laughs> yeah. Just go to the Korea website and then you can download here. Get the files. We have, uh, yeah, some of the versions, testing or stable version. Um, and also the uh, alternative, that, that's the uh, Ubuntu base. Uh, the, the stable one is the Debian base. So we can just download it. Here I have uh, the file ready here. So for example, I have some of the file here. Korea, it's 86. So first thing is you just put into the, your USB flash drive into the machine. Okay. All right, I will just, let me to make it. Okay, so for example, if you have a USB flash drive here, I have a two partitions, SDA1 and SDA2. So uh, you prepare uh, this kind of a, uh, Uh, FAT 32 file system, uh, uh, the size maybe 500 megabytes, that, that's the, the one, and uh, you can format Let me make sure it's the right one. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, won't be, I will have to end my talk, <laughs> okay? All right. All right, here. Okay, so we have this one ready, and uh, we mount. Okay, so I have mount the first partition. It's, uh, it's, it's about one gigabyte. And I just un unzip the file, I just download. To the partition. And basically, that, that's all. Uh, this one can be used for you, uh, can be ready for you to put on the UEFI machine because that's a fat file system and uh, you do not have to do something like uh, make it portable because the UEFI is, is so easy, just fat file system, then the files inside that partition, then that's all. But if you want to do uh, uh, legacy files, to put the legacy files, then you have to do one thing more. That's the command we use here. Uh, all all the, the command I mentioned, it, it can be found on the Korea website. We have the step-by-step -step and the document. So here I just make it bootable, and you can just uh, follow. I just say yes, 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 then you will create the, make it bootable for you. Then this, this, this USB flash drive will be ready for you to do a uh, single machine backup recovery and uh, also can be ready for you to do the massive deployment. I, I will mention that later. Okay, so I'll wait. Okay, last time. So, uh, then I amount. Okay, so this one will be ready and the rest I, I will, because of time limit, so I will just use some of the document to, to mention how to do that. But as, as you know, this one can just the key. It's, it's the key for you to, to do this kind of backup and, and deployment. Okay, so let's back to. All right, that's the command I just used, right? I undip to the flash drive, then that's all. And you, you want to do the legacy files, then you have to make it for the ball. Okay. All right, so, so that, that's, that's the first thing. And uh, for the digital image and cloning, 
and restoring here, uh, we have put <coughs> on the website. So you just go to the Korea website here, and uh, we have a step-by-step -step document here. Okay, so that's the first one. The first one is save this image. So uh, you can use this, this flash drive and put the machine. Okay, so let me uh, uh, sum up, do some of the introduction about this one. Uh, uh, for example, you have a, a, a disk with this kind of uh, partition layout and some of the file system. Uh, this one is a UEFI and uh, I, as I remember, it's a, a, a Debian, Debian system. Okay, so you just, uh, in your bias, you have to make, make sure you can put from the flash drive. So we, with the hard key, maybe like a, a scape or F12 or something, you just press and uh, it will pop up, uh, put menu, and then you choose to put from the, maybe from the CD or the flash drive. It depends on how you put the, the put media, media. And I choose to put from the CD that that's, uh, we do that for the uh, virtual machine, okay? And the second one, you, you will see the large the put menu, and we have a lot of put menu here, and then you can choose the one you like, like uh, to run. You can well, copy all the files from uh, 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 Chromia files to uh, run uh, to the memory, but uh, it depends on you. Most people they will just choose the first one, okay? And uh, lot, some of the uh, m menus it will in a document will have some described, but if you just press. The first one, you will just put into the, the live system, and you will choose the language, oh, because it's a live system, so you have, every time you have to uh, choose some of the configuration, like uh, the language and uh, the keyboard layout. Okay, so for, for the US keyboard layout, default is a US keyboard layout, that's quite easy, just accept. And uh, then we choose to start the Chromia and you can see that from the, the wizard, you can see there are some of the features you can choose. Like the first one is, a, uh, it's maybe too, too small. Maybe I'll uh, take it. Uh, better? Okay. <laughs> okay, the first one you choose to deal with the device and the image. That means you can uh, save the, the hard drive to, as an image or restore the image to a hard drive, something like that. The second one is about a device to device. That means maybe a disk to disk cloning or something like that. And the remote source or remote desk, that means you have two machines. You can, um, the first one can be a server and replicate the, the data to the second one. Okay, that's a machine to machine device. Uh, you can choose one as a source and the other one as a destination. And as for the live server and live client, is what we mention is a massive deployment. For example, like in the computer classroom, you have one temporary machine, and you want to, you know, clone the, first, the, the temporary machine to the rest of the machine, then you can choose that temporary machine as a live server, okay? And for the rest, uh, basically you just use the network boot, then you will uh, accept the, the command and accept the, the image and write to the disk, okay? So the live client is uh, seldom Used because some of do we keep this one is because some of the people they, they do not have a, a, a PSC network booting so they use a flash drive to do it as a, a client. Okay, so that's the, the main menu about this. And for the, the single machine or cloning, you just choose the, the, the first one or the second one. That's not, not too complicated. You just follow this. And uh, we want to save the image. The, in, in this scenario, the first one, as I mentioned, we want to save the image, right? So we now have to choose the repository for where you want to put the, the image, okay? So you can have a local device like a USB flash drive or another, you, another hard drive you want to put, or you can put on an SH server, you can put on a sandbar server, you can put on an unable server, something like that. The image can, can be uh, a lot of place you can put. Okay, so here we just choose uh, the first one. So the first one is save uh, as a local device. Then we put, it will scan the hard, uh, the drives you have on this machine. Then we just save, choose the first one, uh, second one. Second one hard drive. 
we have uh, one terabyte to save the image. Okay, so basically that's the image reversal rate. Uh, some people may maybe want to check the file system about the image reversal rate because before mounting maybe, um, yeah, something. So here you can cho choose to check the file system or not. Okay, so once it's done, then it will show you the, the, the uh, directory layout and not the repository. Then you can uh, accept that. So it will mount the as I mentioned, the second one, partition. Okay, that's the repository we have now. And uh, then you can choose just to save, save the image, save the disk, the whole disk, uh, the source disk as an image. Okay, so that, that, that's the one. And uh, you give it an a image name. Okay, you, you, next time you give it a, a meaning, meaningful image name, no, next time you will remember that, like this one, we have a form, that's the, uh, a Debian call name, and we have some time date as the image name. So, and choose the source disk. Okay, and we save it, save, save that one. Okay, so uh, just follow without, it, it won't be very too difficult, but it still has some learning curve. You have to know some of the naming about the GNU slash layers or something about the image. Okay, and we have a, uh, an option for you to choose to cut different compression. Okay, so here we can choose the default one. That, that's the, the basic, okay. And you can, okay, that, that, that's the one you you want to check if you want to do the file system about the source image. Uh, the, the first one I mentioned you about the repository, and this one is the main, main this one is about the, the source, source disk, source partitions you want to check. If you want to check the file system, before saving, save, save it. And this one is for you to, when the image is saved, do you want to check the image, the integrity of the image? Uh, most of people, you, you know better to check. In, in, in case, uh, sometimes uh, maybe the image is broken. Before you use that, you, you know better to check, okay? Okay, so that, that's the basic one. And do you want to uh, include the, the image? If you, want, you say, Yes, you just choose the, the next one. So all the uh, wizard, we have the default value. If you do not understand, just yes, just press enter. That will be easy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you, you the better to understand. That, that will be better. <laughs> okay, so once everything is done, it will ask, uh, when the, imi uh, the image process is done, do you want to reboot the machine or to power up the machine, something like that here? Okay, so that, that's all. Actually, we have asked a lot of questions, right? Before, but with one command here, it's so long, right? But actually, it saved us a, a, a script for you. So you can keep the script. This time, if you want to use, just, just use that script. That, that's easy, okay? So that's all. They will start uh, uh, ask you to come on to, to, do you really want to do? If you say yes, you will just complain, take an image for the file system and uh, partition it or something like that. Okay, then just go. Okay, that, that's all. Uh, everything, when everything is done, it will check the file. Uh, we, we say we want to check the file system, then it will check. Then that, that's all. The image can, it, it, it's ready there. So if you want to restore the image, you, uh, we back to this step-by-step -step document. And the second one is quite similar. Okay, just put, if you have the uh, image ready, you will, Actually, the image file for Cronia is like something like this one. It's a directory. It contains many files. Okay, I will do a very quick introduction about this one, uh, like uh, the partition layout. Here, that's the partition layout. And that's the, the first partition. That's the second partition, the data. So that's all, okay. So if you are familiar with this one, actually you can, you can play with these files, okay. Okay, with, with that one, if we want to restore the image, it's quite similar. Just put the, current, the USB flash drive and choose the boot menu. Okay, and choose the language, choose the keyboard layout, and start. And also the first one, device image, and choose the repository. Okay, we, we, have, we have to think every time we have a, a separate, you know, so we have to mount. Image repository, that's the same thing here. 
and we choose the image repository from the one terabyte disk, and uh, we have uh, the image ready here, and we can choose this this repository and uh, restore it. <coughs> okay, so that, that, that's basically the first thing. We here we we choose restore disk, so restore image to the disk, and uh, that's the image files we have. Because I, I, in the example, we only have one image, but maybe some of the people, they have more than 10, or be, if you are, a, uh, you do a lot of uh, images before. So here we choose just one and choose the destination disk we want to deploy. Okay, we want to restore. And, and here, there's one thing you can uh, deal with the partition layout. For some of people, they want to uh, deploy the, the image to the larger disk. Here, uh, you can create a partition table proportionally, okay? Okay. So basically, that, that's all. It's quite similar. You want to reboot after the restoring, something like that. And if you say yes, it will just, or here is a check in the file system. Oh, uh, the image, if you choose to check the image before you deploy it, some people maybe move the image to another disk and uh, the image might be broken. So before you do that, you'd better to check the image, the integrity of the image. Here we choose to check. Okay, and you will check. If it's successful, then you just say yes, continue. Okay, now here is checking, and uh, you will assure the image is okay, then you, will, you can confirm twice. Then you will write the image to the, so here you can see you can create a partition layout, something like that, and write the file system the image to the, to the destination disk. Okay, so that, that's the, the uh, re, re, image restoring. Okay, that's the second one I am running some of my time, and I will just go through very quickly about the rest. For this two disk, you just follow here. And quite similar, everything quite similar. Just choose the lang uh, language, keyboard layout, and uh, choose here. You want to do the device to device, and follow the wizard, then you can do the disk to disk cloning, okay? Of course, you have to choose which one is the source, which one is the destination. Use this more, you have to be very careful. Which one is the source, which one is the destination. If you choose something opposite, then that will be very <laughs> in a very bad situation, okay? So that, that's the, the third one I mentioned, and the, the, we'll go to the, the uh, advanced features like uh, unattending mode and messy deployment. Unattending mode here, we also have a, uh, okay, here the step-by-step -step document, and here you can choose this one, precede, pre options. okay? For example, if we want to, uh, as, as I mentioned, we have to, every time we have to choose the language, the keyboard layout, and you are fed up with this one, then you can write the, now put parameters and choose the language and the keyboard layout. You just write it on a, 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 a files like a, like a, the, the one six Linux config or something like that. You just check this document. It will tell you the details, and uh, you can proceed everything. Like uh, the command I, I mentioned in the green command, you can also here you can. Just precede the command here. Then if you, the, this USB flash disk can be automatic. You just plug in the machine and boot. It will automatically choose the language, the keyboard layout, and then run the restore registry. Okay? So that, that's the, the, the one on attending mode. And the, the, the last one is uh, about the messy deployment. I will just go very quickly here. It's also on the, the live document here. And uh, this one, and the light server. Okay, as I mentioned, this one can be a, a light server. Uh, the scenario is like uh, if you're in your computer classroom, you have one temporary machine ready, then you plug in this one and choose here. Put and the uh, language keyboard layout, and here you choose as a light <laughs> server. And that temporary machine can be a light server. And uh, there are two more, uh, actually three more here. Uh, two two more, I, I would say. You can uh, deploy the, the image 
to the rest of the machine. Or another mode is you can just take a temporary machine as a, as a server and uh, it will just read the files, uh, read the, the data directory from the that machine to the client. You don't need to save that as an image. So it depends on you. Some of the computer classroom, uh, the teachers, they just set up one machine and they will just replicate. They he, he just, just don't want or she just don't want to save the uh, image repository. That, that's easy, okay, for him, okay. So here, uh, that's the document uh, we have here. You just choose uh, the client, how to put the client. You can can be the network boot or something like that. And you can also reuse the DHCP uh, service in the, client, uh, in the computer classroom, something like that. So you just choose it and uh, follow the wizard and uh, choose here. Uh, I will go quickly about, yeah, you mount the image here. This, this, ah, here. This one is for you to choose from the image or from the device. If you want to, uh, you have an image repository, you want to uh, replicate the image to the client, you just choose this one. If you want to just directly read the, the disk from the temporary machine, then you choose the second one uh, from the device. Okay, so yeah, the rest are quite similar, quite similar. You just choose which disk you want to deploy and then uh, maybe you will ask how, how uh, like, uh, you want to use the multi case mode or, or broadcast mode or BitTorrent mode. So you can three options you can choose. Okay, both for the image and the uh, 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 device, you can choose these three methods. Uh, the difference is uh, multi case, you have to assign the number of the client so that they can sync. But for the BitTorrent, you don't have to. You, to to do that, Pitora, you got to, everyone can be a server for the Pitora. Everyone can be the grand leech or seed or something like that. Okay, so uh, basically that, that's all the step I, I will just show you here. That's the live server, and uh, the, there's another document about for you to do just deploy from the temporary machine, from the raw drive, hard drive, no no image, just do it. Okay, so that's the document I will show you. And if you really need that, just check the document on the website. That, that will be easy, okay? So, okay, so basically, that, that's, that's all, all we have. Uh, Macy deployment, I just covered that very quickly. The document is all on the website, just check it. And uh, uh, this, this won't be very difficult, as I mentioned to you that uh, in Taiwan, we have a uh, Taichung network, have a primary school, the teacher, uh, about I think about two two months ago, he told us that he used these tools and to uh, replicate about 60, giga, 60 gigabytes data from one uh, temporary machine to around 20 machines. Okay, and uh, every machine take uh, 10 something minutes. Okay, in the whole computer classroom, and he told me that if uh, he told us that if it's very efficient. Before he had uh, plenty of time. He can go to the bathroom, have some of coffee, <laughs> coffee and ready to do that. But with this one, he do not have time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's because every machine here to put the on the PSE, right? Put, 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 and everything done now. So he do not have time to go to the bathroom. Okay, that's the, it won't be the basic cup. If you want, you need a, the messy deployment, use this one, that quite, quite, can be so useful. Okay, that's the end of my talk. So, uh, any questions? Okay, please. With the with the, the server mode, how do you dif differentiate between using the the source machine's hard drive and an image? Uh, when you choose, uh, there's a, a place you can choose from the maybe I'll show. show there's, there's a front image and a front device. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. That's a front image or front is, device. Is, yeah. is there a way to set it? Is there a way to set it up so that you could pixie boot the machine and run clones of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, that, the same. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We have a uh, PSC ready for the, this method, especially for the live server. The, the live server can always most of the cases you just put from the PSC server. So you, if you, if you run the light server, you don't have to put a flash drive into the client machine, you can just pixie boot? Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. See. So, so the, what's the, what is the purpose of the light client then? 
Oh, as I mentioned, some of the machines, some of the machines, they do not, they have some of the issues about the PSE booting. Okay, got it, got they, it. With okay. that, you, you have to prepare this guy. But that's the backup plan. That's the plan B. Most, most of people, they will just use PC booting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no need to use this one. What, uh, what kind of a speed difference or improvement do you get by using the BitTorrent versus, say, a broadcast method? Is that, I mean, I'm just wondering what, yeah. how much difference that could make. Uh, actually, we have some of the data we have before. I will just show you here. Okay. This one is the movie case. Okay, that's the time. And this one from the image, this one from the raw device. Okay, so as you can see that, when you have 32 machines, the uh, uh, multicasting, you will take about 2,500 second, uh, seconds. And uh, for the, from the road device, it's about just half, none, really, that's half. Mm. So for the picture mode, you will be more efficient, of course. And uh, especially, especially from the road device. Yeah, you find, it's not from the image. From the image, is in the reverse row, maybe in the hard drive, it may be <coughs> some kind of bottleneck. But from the road device, uh, it will be easier because the file is already in the, the road, road device, that's more efficient. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. <laughs> please, please. Yeah. I, I just wonder if you could touch on the support for S3. S3? Yeah. Uh, I know I've seen it mentioned, but it's Yeah, yeah. Actually, if you have uh, some of the, we we do that, we, we did that before, but we have have, have not verified that for a long time. Uh, if you can mount S S3 in a ground same Linux, then of course it can be. It can be done, yeah. And please. Um, my question's similar, but uh, in terms of file system, I'm curious about, like, Homezilla's been loved and been around for a long time. I'm curious yes. uh, how it handles some more modern file systems, like maybe ButterFS or... Yeah, yeah, ButterFS is supported, but because ButterFS is still changed, so we have to keep up. Yeah, uh, Thomas is a uh, kernel uh, revised ButterFS is uh, 6 point ten or something? Currently. 6.5, yeah, we'll be ready, okay. Okay, okay. okay I, I, I have used all my time. I will be here, I'll be here, and we have some more stickers if you want, yeah, okay? <laughs> all right, thank you. Okay, I'll be here, I'll be here, thank you.